SCP-747 is my submission for the annual McGill University Game Jam. I wanted to make a quick post-mortem video in hopes that what I learned and experimented with while making it could be useful to other game developers. Let's start with inspiration. A few weeks ago, I played this indie game called Spirits of Xanadu, which is heavily inspired by the 0451 game genre, also better known as immersive simulators. Uh, the most popular games in the genre are Deuce X and System Shock. They usually involve elements from S FPS's, RPG's, uh, they tend to have multiple ways to go about reaching your goals. I kind of had a revelation when playing this game that you do not need next-gen graphics in order to make a game immersive. Uh, I think the biggest haha moment was when I turned on the hot plates on and off uh, on the oven and realizing that it was a simple material color change. Uh, it may seem silly at first, but these small random gameplay elements make the world seem much more realistic uh, because not everything in the game has a finite dedicated purpose to the story and gameplay. Uh, so when you're doing a puzzle, it acts as noise in your investigations as well. Uh, if you look at the code I wrote for the oven and sink in SCP-747, they were both less than 10 lines of code, and yet everybody that played my game had a positive reaction to the fact that you were able to do those things. As for the graphics, I owe everything to this guy on YouTube called Mrs. Uh, he's an amazing game developer, he's always willing to share his knowledge. Uh, he's one of the main reasons why I decided to switch from Unity to Godot. Uh, he made a video about stylized flat color graphics, where the trick is basically to use a color palette um, and use unshaded materials on your models. Uh, I then improved on his method because he was using multiple materials on his models. I found a way to unwrap the model then assign uh, those parts to a color in the palette texture. Uh, and this way my entire game uses a single material, which saved me a lot of time uh, and probably made my game run smoother. Uh, also a point to make about palettes, I think uh, they're extremely important. I've only been using them since recently, uh, but I realized that they make the game much easier on the eyes. Uh, they also limit uh, your uh, possibilities, which is very often good for creativity, right? It forces you into an action um, instead of pondering which color you should use for this or that. Other than that, I made the map on Blender by adding a plane mesh, subdividing it, and using the sculpting tool um, to create the terrain. Story. I've always made games that had no story at all and that were 100% gameplay. Uh, I think game jams are a great opportunity to experiment with new things, so I decided to make a game that was story-centric. I used uh, Celtex to organize all of the possible options that the player would have throughout the game. It also gave me a place where I could write the dialogues and then just copy-paste them into Godot when I was ready. Project organization. I'm still figuring out this part. Um, so far what works best for me is having separate folders for different scenes. If you're not familiar with it, scenes in Godot are not the same as scenes in Unity. They are much more like prefabs with more functionalities. They give you the opportunity to divide the game into smaller manageable pieces. Um, I'm open to any suggestions that you guys have that works for you. Uh, what I personally do is I have an import and script folder in each of these scenes folders. Um, let's say that I have a log cabin in my game. I will import the raw Blender model into the import folder. Uh, tweak it, then uh, turn it into an actual scene that I can use in the engine and put that into the parent, uh, the log cabin folder. Um, I also like to put scripts in a different folder because at first glance sometimes it's hard to know which is the script, which is the scene. That's it. I hope this video is useful to you in some degree. There are links to tools and other stuff mentioned in this video in the description. I'll see you next time.